Hey guys, and welcome back to Building Habits. In case you're new here, this is a series where I introduce a set of rules you should try and follow in every game you play. The goal is to teach you strong fundamental principles that we will improve upon as we go. This series is my personal take on how to improve in chess, starting from 400 ELO all the way up to 2000 ELO and beyond. I'm gonna choose a series of rules that I have to follow what you might notice is that you will miss chances to play winning moves. That's okay. The goal here is to focus on the fundamentals and I'm trying to get you guys to build good habits and play high percentage moves that will help you increase your rating. Okay, follow along guys. We're gonna start with the five minute game. That's the time control we've been playing. We're rated 1200. Obviously, we want to get up to 1250, 1300. Those are the goals. But we're not in a, a big rush. We want to make sure we're focusing on some of the openings, getting good positions to start off the game, and then fall, falling back on those fundamental habits in the middle game and the end game. So let's get it in. Here we go. So we said we were going to stick... Um, we said we were going to stick with e4 just as a routine. And also, um, not the first time we've seen this opening. We did see it last time, last stream. If my opponent lets me get the center, I think I'm going to take it 100% of the time. And whenever faced with an opportunity to close the game or open the game, I think you guys have pretty much always seen that I am opening the game. If my opponent played this move here, pawn up, would I play d5? No, I would. I would take it. Okay, and the same thing is going to apply here. I'm going to take it. Okay, queen takes d5. So, let's go knight f3. Um, we do want to play knight c3 to hit the queen. But at the moment, knight c3, uh, he could take this pawn if I, before this move. So, starting with knight f3 to guard the pawn. Now I'm going to go knight c3. And you've actually heard me say before that if I can play pawn to d5 in the middle of the board, harass these knights, this is a, this is a privilege e5 here we have had some crushing wins in level three because of pawn pushes in the middle there's no way that openings where your opponent you know takes with the queen and then brings the queen back there's no way you should be getting away with that so knight there i'm going to get my division <laughs> my developed bishop my bishop developed to c4 i'm going to guard this pawn in the middle and i'm thinking about a3 next just kick that knight out the only reason i wouldn't do it right now is then i could take that pawn so have to defend first with bishop there okay he's gone bishop here very tricky move very tricky move he actually has some intentions here he's got a knight there and boy that knight is really thinking about going to c2 if i take back so still gonna follow uh some of the habits but hang on bishop there we always want to go here bishop takes if we take back it's got to be with the pawn right because knight takes c2 is going to be forking our king and rook so it's actually in moments like this where uh, the habits aren't going to, they're not going to guide you uh, too well because you're going to look at this pawn and you're going to look at this and literally how, how do I take back with the queen and guard this pawn? Honestly, I might do something like bishop here. Bishop b3 guards this pawn and makes sure that after takes, I do have knight takes or queen takes rather. So I think there's a, there's a, maybe a difference in how this might be interpreted by by some people um i think i'm gonna play this move because i think it's just like the safest move that kind of guards everything i'm gonna play bishop here but there's a lot of uh, good moves that you could do maybe you do h3 anyway and you take back with the pawn that's possible um i think castling is also possible and probably one of the better moves castling but i'm gonna choose the move that hopefully follows most of the rules we know which is that we don't want to allow pawn takes at, at all times we need to like Queen takes. Um, yeah, castle is definitely a great move, Valentinian. Um, castling is probably what I would say is the best move, but I'm going to choose one of the more solid moves that I think kind of follows the uh, our, our rules to a T. Hello, Nepros, though. What's up, buddy? Okay, so I, I'm going to take this pawn in the middle of the board, and I'm not, not going to look to forfeit my castling rights. So I'm going to take with the knight and already a, a super weird opening, I want to say. After bishop takes, can I even take that because of knight takes here? I think my opponent's playing really well. Um, I'm going to say no. 
I'm going to bring my knight into the middle of the board and watch this. So as you can see, if I had been more comfortable with sacrificing this pawn and castling earlier, it would have been a lot better. It would have been a lot better. Uh, I'm actually getting punished for that right now. Don't really have a great position. Knight's covering here. I think we're going to take this bishop because um, we want to we want to kick this knight out. That's basically the, the vibe. So something like bishop takes and simply kick the knight out with a3. Yeah, no, we don't have a great position. Um, sacrificing the pawn would have been best earlier. Not finding that active approach means that our game is a little bit slower than, than we wanted it to be. Isolated pawn is a good thing. This knight's on a weird square. We're used to it being on c3, so we have to adjust here. We do have to adjust. Why castle? Well, usually I'm trying to castle as soon as possible. Let's finish the development here. Bring the rooks to the middle. I think the rooks here are just too obvious this time. We don't. I don't even need to ask you guys um, because two rooks in the, the center of the board is going to be a good thing. Okay, bring the rook here. Takes it. I think we just take back, maybe double. Okay, let's double up. And we got our we got our h3, right? We got this move. We're familiar with it. It's going to happen next. No, an isolated pawn is not good, real black queens. That's why I'm happy that my opponent has it. I'm happy that my opponent has it. Okay, I'm going to just finish all this. Push uh, g2 for light square. So I like what you're saying. You're saying, hey, don't we want to push this pawn so that we have this square available and not a dark square? Completely agree. But the only re thing is that, you know, g3 obviously drops the knight. So I would have to move my knight and then play g3. And if you thought of that, then, you know, I think that's a great, great suggestion. Um, I'm going to centralize my pieces here. Knight into the middle of the board, and I'm making an, an attack here. We're doing well. I can even think about bringing the king to the middle, as crazy as that sounds. As crazy as that sounds. Okay, my knight's being attacked. I can maybe make a, a threat here. But yeah, we're approaching the end game very, very quickly. The queens got traded off super early in this game. So king to the middle is definitely going to be on my radar here. You would have hung the knight playing g3. Well, I, it's almost not that bad if you hung the knight playing g3, because it would have been for a good reason. Your thought process would have been, hey, I want to play g3, get my king escape square on a light square, not a dark square. So would have I would have given you a pass for that. If this was a classroom, I wouldn't give you a failing grade. Okay, let's take because it's a free pawn. Take because it's a free pawn. Okay, now we're in the end game. End game only has a few rules that we're going to follow, but king to the middle is, is a big one. And, um, okay, we can't quite go there because of this pawn. King to the middle, we want to attack pawns with our pieces. Okay. Okay, we're being checked, and we just talked about how this loses the pawn, so I'm going to actually have to backtrack here and guard this pawn. It's a little hasty there, King E2, but I was just trying to rush to the center of the board. Okay, so he's attacking our pawn. I don't think it's going to be that difficult for me to play C3. And once I kick the knight out, I think I'm going to continue with my plan. Bring the king to the middle of the board. This lad is playing well for sure. For sure. He's got a good game going. So remember, these are the pawns we want to attack. Which ones are easiest to attack? I think the middle, the center pawn, and the A pawn. So those are the ones we're going to be focusing on. Uh, let's bring the king to the middle once again. He's doing the same thing, so I like what I'm seeing from him as well. Yeah, king to the middle. We want to attack these pawns. Uh, right now, knight d5 is not quite working. Doing that fork. Knight f5 would be a good move here, but to me it looks a little bit fancy. I'm just going to centralize my rook. I'm just going to centralize my rook. Knight f5 would be a great move, but um, I think this move is really good as well. Still want to complete this. Attack pawns, and if I get my hands on a pass pawn, best believe I'm going to be pushing it. I'm going to be pushing it. Hey, Pharmacy Bra. Thanks, Shadow Wolf, for the uh, 18 months. What's up, buddy? Rook there. Well, I'm up one pawn. We know that. So I'm going to be taking. I'm going to be taking. Now, king. 
Center's here. We can always centralize. What else am I supposed to do? Use my king, attack pawns. These are the three pawns. This one's pretty well defended. I'm either going to bring my king up here or over here to take this pawn. So we're going to attack pawns with our king. And we're not really going to have any regard for what he's doing. So honestly, if he goes here and knight here and knight here, it's a pretty decent idea. Pretty decent idea, right? He's going to take a bunch of my pawns. I'm not even going to pay attention to that. I'm just going to focus on taking pawns myself. Just going to be taking pawns myself. Even though after this, I could go king d5 and take it. I've already made my decision. I'm, I know I'm going over here and I, I want to attack these pawns. Okay, well, again, I could go here and go for the center pawn, but I've already chosen which side of the board I want to go to. And I feel like in these, these building habits series, the, the end games are actually the, um, the number one place. And he's, he's defended this pawn. That's really good. Um, can we maybe make a pass pawn? I'm trying to think here. I think maybe the, the easiest is to just keep doing what I was doing, which is uh, taking all the pawns. We don't quite have a pass pawn over here. I mean, he's, he's kind of blocking it. So literally, look what I'm doing with my king. <laughs> I'm moving. OK, that's a free knight. I'm moving my king, and I'm just taking all his pawns. It's, it's really not that difficult, right? The, the, the way that I've played this is, I think, very straightforward. I think it's very straightforward. All I did was use my king. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy, but yeah. I think in this habit series, one of my favorite things, and one of the things I, I've always said is going to help the most is... The idea of king activation in the end game. Like, I took my king and I came from g1. I'm only up one pawn here. And I grab that king and look at the work I'm able to do with it. After we traded, I, I'm literally only making king moves for the rest of the game. Just, just running around the board collecting things basically. And then we got a pass pawn. Let's push it, right? It's, it's the end game where I feel like I have the least amount of rules to guide me. Bring the king in the middle, attack your opponent's pawns, either with your pieces or your king. And if you have a pass pawn, push it. You know, those are the three rules that I follow in almost every endgame. Well, pretty much every endgame I've ever played uh, on habits. So without following a lot of rules, I think that we get a lot of work done. Okay, so endgame, move your king. You can see what happens. It, it works very well. Um, we're not going to dive deep into this opening because it was e4 and ac6. And all you guys need to know is that if you can take the center, do it. And if it gets challenged, I almost always recommend taking it because generally speaking, I do not recommend you guys close the this middle of the board up. I think you should open it. Opening the middle is going to allow your pieces to develop normally. There's going to be open lines for attack. And you're gonna, you know if his queen comes out, then you get some free tempi by attacking it. Okay. Let's just uh, just jump right into the next one. Just jump right into the next one. So d4, d5, right? This is the uh, the normal. And we talked about uh, what we want to do against the London, right? So we mentioned the London. Um, we're going to play here because we don't know like what type of London he's going to do. And if you guys remember from last time, we talked about um, when playing against the London, this is the setup that I'm going to do. And what did I tell you guys? I said, we're going to play pawn here. We're going to bring our knight out. And I said, I said, you know, it, are we going to get guys in the London who are like playing pawn takes pawn? I don't think so. If they do, um, then they're either making a big blunder or they really know what they're doing. Okay, so we're going to play queen here. And we're attacking this pawn and we're attacking this pawn. So our opponent has defended it. And honestly, already, I think we can uncork a miniature little tactic here. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. But the, the London that my opponent's playing is unfortunately already uh, already going down to the move C4. So this is a setup that I told you guys we were going to play against the London whenever we get it. So we're just going to play C4. Doesn't look like much. It's like a, Maybe it looks like a baby tactic or something. Um, and we're going to take this pawn. That's the whole point of putting the queen there. So I know that uh, this doesn't look like habits at all, but... That's why I said level three habits is a little bit different. We're going to be working on openings. We're going to be actually looking at them and um, trying to remember some important things that we're going to repeat whenever we see this opening again. So this is a setup that, that we were comfortable with. 
and that's why that's why I'm repeating it. That's why I'm repeating it. So, for example, here, you know, I can I can give a check to this king either on uh, b4 or c3. One of these, yeah, and he is a, he is a chess player. He's got the flair there. See that? We're gonna have to we're gonna have to give him a grade after this. Um, so, queen checks look really good. Um, queen checks look really good. Remember, there's also e6 just to finish development. So after bishop e2, we've we've collected our pawn. The only the only thing is that rook there might collect this pawn at some point. So that's one thing I, that I would be sort of concerned about. Um, I am tempted by the move uh, b6. Both of these moves stand out to me. I think because the king is in the middle, I don't need to be worried about this because I have a check. So I'm, I think I'm just going to go like this and try to get castle. Nice and simple. Just going to go nice and simple. And we'll look at this afterwards. Um, but right now, I've taken my pawn. Um, Rook here now looks like he's going to win this pawn. So I might be tempted by the move b6. And I'm just going to try to go, you know, bishops out, castle. That's the idea. I've got an extra pawn I, that I took, you know, long ago down here on b2. Can I show the setup against the London? Well, after the game, uh, hopefully we can just look at the analysis board together. And you guys will get an idea um, what I'm talking about. So i got to make sure my queen doesn't get trapped. But at the moment... I don't see how it can be attacked. I don't see how it can be attacked, thankfully. E6 does sort of close down my gateway. Yeah, if you meant coming back into the game like that, absolutely. Okay, let's get castle. Castling is important. But yeah, after the game, we'll take a look at this line and just the, the setup against London in general, because at this level, I think you're going to see a lot of London games. You really will. So. That's why it looks like I'm not following any habits in the opening. The reason I'm doing it is because I'm going to play a little bit differently. These are moves you're going to start to memorize and play regularly. And you know, they might not be you know, perfect habit moves, for example. Okay, let's develop. Doesn't look like much, but it is developing. It connects the rooks. It connects the rooks. Okay, knight in the middle um, definitely looks like a capture. He takes back. And here we have a, a choice to make. Um, it's kind of a special game. It is a little bit different than, than usual. Um, basically here we have a really fast plan that we can do with our pawns. The rooks aren't too important because everything's locked up. You know what I mean? There's, there's not a lot to do here. So I'm thinking about just pushing the pawns and then the rooks can start supporting behind the pawns. That's what I'm thinking. So rook here, and I think this rook might be really, really good on that square. For example, after this, takes, takes. Look at that rook. All of a sudden it's opened up. Okay, so we're going to play our rook over here. I know it doesn't look like much, but hey, those are some pass pawns we can support. We're still going to play h6. It's brought the knight back. Um, I think we'll play rook here. You'd be scared about your queen. Well, the thing is, whether or not my queen was going to get trapped, I decided to leave it there. Um, my opponent could have made some better moves to try to trap my queen. He ended up sort of leaving me there, uh, you know, getting off scot-free. But it was quite possible for him to make some better attempts to try to trap my queen. So the rook here is to support my pawn, because my plan the whole time has been this. It's this. I'm pushing all my pawns here. Basically, if you guys did random pawn moves, you'd be playing the best pawn moves. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's helpful. And look at this. After I take, this rook is magically placed beautifully on the... Only open file for me. Works out nicely. And then this rook is kind of supporting the pass pawns. Um, I might go here, but he's he's got his bishop there, right? So it's not that good. We've talked about uh, e4. Um, we've talked about how this is a little bit different in level 3 habits. Am I just going to take this without thinking? Of course not. We have, to, we have to be a little less reactive, which means after pawn there, am I just going to take it for no reason? No. Um, I want to keep the tension, right? After pawn takes, I want to be able to take back. And I don't want to take him because then he takes back. Am I trading this pawn for this pawn? No. It's important to remember when you make a trade like this, I'm trading this pawn for this pawn. It takes back. Would I want to trade this pawn for that pawn? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. So let's experiment with the move 
B3. And there's a reason that I want to do this move. Um, I don't actually... I don't actually think it's the best move. Um, I don't actually think it's that great. But the reason I want to play this is I want to show you guys um, Queen for two rooks, which is um, one of the newer things that we are introducing in level three. So um, Queen for two rooks is definitely a trade that we are comfortable going for, and we will, we will take that rook. Okay. Um, we've had a situation so far where it's been presented to us as an option to, to take these, these two rooks for a queen in another game, and we definitely took it. So that's a level three thing. That's a level three thing. Um, trade followed by a nice little fork. That is a uh, cute, cute little tactic there that we'll be happy to see. It's a two move tactic, but these are the, this is the type of moves that I'd like you guys to get familiar with in level three. You know, it's not going to be crazy to see you guys out here flexing with your 1200, 1300 ratings, finding tactics like that. Nice little fork. And now we've got a pass pawn. How about we just push it, baby? Okay. Okay, he's got the blockade. He's got the blockade. Now there's a free center pawn, though. I've pushed it as far as I can go. Now this pawn is free. Okay, he's, he's given me a few pawns there. Knight in the middle. Time to hit the trading floor. Exactly, exactly. I like what you just said. This is my plan. I want to trade pieces wherever possible. So right here, I'm looking at bishop here to trade that. And to trade that bishop, I'm looking at bishop there. Can I do that? Well, no. So I might play like my rook up somewhere to defend that square to support it. Um, and by avoiding the trade, he lost his center pawn, and then he lost his rook in the corner. So you see how the whole game falls apart, but it's not because I, I was playing, I don't know, too insane. All I wanted to do was trade pieces. He said no. Okay, that's fine. And uh, as a result, okay, we're looking for more trades here, by the way. As a result, I was able to win his rook. Okay, more trades. Trades are always, always good. This is a pin right now. So we're looking to just take this bishop. And if I can get another pass pawn, I'll just try to push it all the way down the board. So Let's take here. Okay, we maybe throw in some checks. This might not be um, the cleanest, but it's really easy to pre-move positions like this because he has a uh, dark square bishop. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to, okay, let's take, take, get rid of the pawn. Let's pre-move. Let's just get rid of that thing. Let's get rid of that thing. And let's, okay. So the issue is, do we have a ladder checkmate possible? <laughs> How are we going to set up the ladder checkmate? You're going to notice that my own pieces are going to be in the way. Right? <laughs> that's, not very, that's not very convenient. My own knight's in the way on d5. This guy's a, uh, this guy's a soldier working for the other team. It's terrible. He actually provided shelter for this king. Right? This king should not be able to go here when my queen is like that. So the knight should be out of the way. The knight should be out of the way. Right? Number one thing is when you're, you're doing like any type of ladder staircase checkmate like that, this knight should be out of the way. In fact, usually what I do is I, I throw my pieces to the side of the board in the endgame when I'm trying to checkmate. Because all they do is, is provide opportunities to draw, they, they get in the way, they block checks. Okay? So get, get rid of the material you don't need for the checkmate, okay? Get rid of the material you don't need for the checkmate. Um, we tried. Uh, played a really uh, solid game. Very quick. Very quick. But um, some issues with his opening. Some issues with his opening. Okay? The opening was the London. We're going to take a look just now. Um, let's take a look at the London system. A lot of people were asking, like, you know, not really following the the serious type of habits in the beginning of the game. And that's because the, the setup that we played is one that we have uh, that we have ready. Mountain 96. Let's see his uh see 89.5, 89.4. Look at Mountain 96. How were his habits? I'm not sure. They seemed uh they seemed pretty good. He he fell into an opening trap. I think he kept the game fairly level since then. 
thought that uh, Mountain 96 played well. He played quick at the end. Brought his king to the middle at the end. And as a result of bringing his king to the middle, he didn't get mated. I, I, I think he did pretty well. We said we'd talk about the London opening. Um, this is something, this is the setup, knight there and queen there, that we're going to go for whenever we see the London. Okay, so that's why we did this, pretty much without thinking. Uh, knight here, not a good move. Okay, this is not what you want to be doing. So mirror, in case you're, if you're listening, buddy, you need, uh, you need a different move here. You need a, new, a different move here. If you want to play the, the way that you've played, the best move, honestly, is pawn takes here. I know it sounds surprising, but pawn takes here. And after queen takes or queen takes, there'll be different variations. Um, queen takes b2 is kind of like a pawn sacrifice. I think it's a way too advanced for 1200. So my recommendation is when you play the London, do not develop your kingside knight. Instead, play this pawn, uh, this knight, and that pawn. And then that will meet these three moves. And you'll be able to deal with this pawn a lot easier. It's not going to be like as much of a threat. Okay. So... Definitely, I would go here first move, then I would go there, and then I would go there. Most important thing to do in the Lena is develop your queen side pieces. It's not going to say, you know, the engine that it's the best move, but after queen here, at least you can defend this pawn a lot easier than uh, the way that you did it. Because, if you look at the game, yeah, I mean, how are you supposed to defend this pawn? Well, pawn takes here is the answer. If you look at the, the engine, d takes c5 is the only move which you know has a decent evaluation. Everything else, minus 0. 0.6, minus 0. 0.79, right? It's kind of a disaster. So what you've done is you've played an opening into a situation where there's only one move, and that move doesn't make a lot of sense, in my opinion. So uh, I would go here. Is queen c1 bad? Well, you lose your center pawn, so yes. So yes. Okay, this is a double attack, and there's not easy ways to deal with that. Okay, knight b3, c4, and you can see the position's already like minus two. Pretty bad. And from here, I think it was, I mean, just a strong, a strong game. Uh, we definitely had better moves to do here. Definitely. Um, you know, at this point, I should probably play this or maybe give a check. But we continued pretty normally. Um, the bottom line is, from our opening, we have a position that's minus three. Minus three. More than minus three. That's the equivalent of being up a piece just at the start of the game. All we did is win a pawn, but that's how good our position is. Okay? That's how good our position is. So that's exactly what we want. Level 3 habits. We want to be putting pressure on our opponents in the opening. Um, that's why I suggested this way of playing against the London. And we're going to keep doing that. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next game. But that's just a little bit about the London. Um, this setup that, we're, that I just showed you is what we do against white, whatever setup they do. Okay. Pawns. Two knights out, and then an early queen. An early queen move is going to throw off a lot of your opponents, as it did against my opponent just now. Okay, we said we were going to stick with e4, and we are. e4, e5, okay, knight f3. We don't need to change up our opening that much, in my opinion. Mano Blanco, 403. Muchas gracias. Thank you, buddy. Man, oh, Blanco. All right, d5. Okay, well, we're going to take it. We are going to take that pawn in the center. The knight takes back. I've always said taking pawns in the middle of the board before we are castled is a eh, little, um, a little risky. Um, in this situation, this move would actually be a fantastic move. It really would. So if you play this, Completely understand. Um, I'm going to play bishop here to try to keep my uh, similar structure uh, going. But there's a lot of reasons why we don't want to get into a habit of taking this pawn because knowing when it's good and when it's bad is going to be difficult. It is going to be difficult. Um, here, however, it is not going to be difficult, hopefully for you guys, to identify a, I would say, fairly basic puzzle rush tactic. Fairly basic puzzle rush tactic, and one that you guys should hit. Watch the stream if you're watching right now and you've never seen it before. Take it, put it right up here, commit it to memory. Do not forget it. You're going to see it in a lot of your games. A lot of your games. Not knight takes e5. No. No, because there's no checkmate down here. At first, we're going to start with bishop takes f7. 
Bishop takes f7. King takes, and then we're going to go knight takes e5 check. And now you can see what's happening. We're uncovering the attack. We're going to win multiple pawns here as a result. But remember to start with the bishop check, because if you start with knight takes pawn, you're going to lose your queen. Maybe you'll take here with check. Black moves the king, and then it's like, wait, what is the, what is the answer? Right? You're just down a queen for nothing. Okay. And queen e8. Guys, this is why we learn our tactics. Because we can put this guy six feet under with queen c4 check. And that is going to be a KO checkmate. Start off the day here. That's why we look at tactics. That's why we look at tactics. That might have looked very advanced to some of you guys, and, and that's okay. That's okay if you've never seen it. Um, have a look again. It's really common. Basically, a lot of the time, it's very tempting for your opponent to just pin the knight like this. And had there been a knight here, it still would have been possible. But basically, what you have to look at for this tactic as white is, after this move, can I put this knight somewhere that gives a check, and then is this bishop hanging as a result? So it's because this move, the, the bishop is hanging. No one's protecting it. That's what makes me think, oh, I got to be on the lookout for tactics. Okay, so bishop takes f7, and another really common tactic is checkmating a king like this on this diagonal. And you might say, oh, like, why, why is that common? That seems so obscure. Well, imagine anytime something gets sacrificed on that square, the king takes, and if he gets checked one more time by just about anything, queen there, queen there, doesn't matter, the really likely response is to go here because it's not safe in the middle. You want to tuck your king away. Okay. And now any single check that you deliver safely on this diagonal to that king is going to be checkmate. Even if it's a bishop, there could be a bishop right here for white. That'd be checkmate. So it's just good to remember. It's just a, just a pattern. Um, you know, after you take and hide the king, these pieces always contribute to just basically smothering their own king for checkmate. Aren't we breaking the no sacrifice rule? We have we have tactics. There are going to be certain tactics that, as I've, as I've been mentioning, in the opening phase of the game, we are not going to be following all the habits. It's just not going to be the case. So there are certain tactics that uh, you just have to know, and, and they're going to be classic tactics. It's like uh, you know the, the Lucina position or something. They're just some very classic chess positions that you need to know. And uh, you might say, like, scholar's mate, that's not, you know, that's not habits bringing the queen out, but everyone at this level should know it. So there are a few things that are going to be uh, a little bit off the beaten path, but they're very important to know. So simple tactics like this. If you're 12, 1300, you should be seeing stuff like this in your tactics training on chess.com when you're studying your tactics. So if you're already at this reading in Blitz, this type of tactic, Bishop F7, should be very basic. Um, and one that I'm hoping you guys will be able to get and solve successfully in Tactics Trainer. Let's continue. I wonder if we're going to get another opening. No, it's going to be e45. So I'm going to stick with this. Okay, we like the, the knights uh, out safely, bishop out safely. Okay, let's castle. Ah, e6. So one thing we talked about with black was uh, we were going to consider playing this move to stop um, the bishop from getting out in order to, to pin. So the same thing could apply to white. Basically, this bishop move and that knight in there is very annoying. So learning from, from what we discussed last time, h3 is actually the move that makes a lot of sense here. If you play d3, that's totally fine. Totally fine. But... The idea of h3 is to stop that guy. So, uh, knight a5. He's got some plan here. He's like, like looking to take my bishop. Okay, dude. Okay. I um, think I'm going to move the bishop back. Uh, if he takes, I'll take back towards the center. Bishop takes f7. Yeah, I can't do that move every game, unfortunately. Can't do that move every game, unfortunately. Um, I think that this move is still going to be decent. Um, yeah, this move still looks strong. 
It's actually another move that I, I think is reasonable to, to start uh, start looking at, and it's knight takes pawn. So I, I absolutely would go bishop g5 here, but knight takes pawn is something that I think is worth looking at. I, I don't even know if it's like the best move here, but after seeing my opponent resign, I'm convinced that it was the best move there. I, it was the best move by far. Yeah. So that's really important we played that. Very, very important we played that, now that I think about it. This opening, guys, e4, c5. So, what did we say we were going to play against this? Anyone remember? McQuick22, thanks for the five months. Any chance there'll be a trim video folks on the recommended openings? Blah, 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 blah. Yes, is the answer. Tonight, Karakhan, Valentinian, this is not the Karakhan, my chief. <laughs> Not the Karakhan. This is C3. That's correct. Lime Mile gifting a sub. Let's go, Lime. Appreciate it, dude. D4. And would you look at this, guys? We already have a better position. We already have a better position. And what did I say we were going to be looking to do? Play D5 and kick that knight where possible. We're going to get our knight out, get our bishop out. But I like to put pressure early. Early D5. Check your strategy. Gifted sub. Lime Mile gifted sub. Basil, gifting a sub as well. Look at that. One on top of the other on top of that. The Alpin. I mean, dude, C3 is just, it's OP, man. It's OP. Okay. Uh, Queen A5. Now, I cannot play Bishop here or I'll lose my pawn. So I am going to play Knight here. But am I complaining about bringing a Knight out? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Knight to B4. Now, can anyone tell me what move I should play here? I mean, I have a lot of good options, but guys, tempo, tempo, tempo. I always say, whenever you get to push your opponent's pieces around, you got to find those tempo moves. A3. Hey, I'm not going to complain about A3, but you know what, guys? After A3, there's a pin here. There's a pin here. So after A3, you're actually not threatening anything. Okay, so the move I'm looking for, which some people have said, is bishop b5. Bishop b5. Look at that check. Tell me, how's he going to get out of that? Is he going to go bishop there? Well, guys, I'll take it. What's this king doing? It's in the center of the board. Whenever your opponent's king is in the center of the board, the number one thing you should do is immediately castle. Don't get caught up trying to, like, you know, oh, I'll play knight here and I'll threaten this pawn. Now this king's not there. Forget all that. Castle your king. Castle your king. You know why you should castle your king? Because you're showing off. You're like, look, look at me. I can castle. <laughs> what about you, dude? You can't do anything. You're trash. R Rook c8. Look at me. I'm castle. This king's on d7. So you have to castle immediately when you see a king in the middle just to show off. It's, a, it's very important. Okay, so he goes Rook c8. Um, he could be trying to recycle his king. Let's focus on development. Okay, let's, let's we want our, probably our Rook here and probably our Rook here. Two open files for the Rooks. We got, do we agree? Guys? Are we agreeing on that? Rook here, Rook here. Look, I mean, they look pretty good. Um, now I can actually play A3 as well. I'm just going to throw the Rook to E1. It just can't be, can't be bad. You know what I mean? It can't be bad. Okay, he's got his Bishop uh, developing. We got to move our Queen here. Um, doesn't look like this is too crazy. Um, queen E2. I'm also looking at other squares for the Queen. Queen D4 is central, but... Falls victim to uh, knight c2. Okay. So queen e2, I'm definitely thinking is pretty logical. And why am I not caring about the center pawn? Because, dude, the king's in the middle. The king's in the middle, right? That should be your, your immediate reaction that the king's in the middle. Like, you know, you almost wish that pawn wasn't there. So it'd be easier to attack. Okay. So... We're, we're following the rules. Rook c1. I think it's reasonable. We said we were going to go for it. Let's do it. NP Sharky, thanks for the five months. Fetus Walrus Encounter. Not only is he in here with five gifted subs on top of that, but he also came in with 1,500 bits. How about the support from uh, Fetal Walrus? Thanks, man. Okay. Knight takes. Uh, let's capture it. And after he captures back, he's making a threat on my bishop. I do have to deal with that. I'm going to try not to overthink things and just go back. Just go back.
Thank you, Peace One Three One. I have I always have good things to say about uh, about the chat that we have here on Chessbra. Guys, he's playing Queen Takes Pawn. What what the hell am I looking at here, dude? I'm gonna give you a check. Your king's in the middle of the board. Did this guy not remember? Does this guy not remember? Free knight. Oh, worship. Free knight. What? Oh, worship. That's not a free knight, buddy. That's a free queen. That's a free queen. That's what that is. However, my opponent has no business acting all cocky with his king in the middle of the board. King in the middle of the board. I think what Warship meant to say, I think Warship, guys, you got to give Warship uh, a break. He's one of our older viewers. Um, he was probably autocorrected from his phone. He was typing knight. What he meant was free rook. He meant rook. I think he was typing rook, got autocorrected to knight. He's one of our elderly viewers. So uh, we, do, we do have to uh, appreciate uh, you know, that happens from time to time. Right, we're going to take that free rook. Okay, the queen goes back. It's like, dude, was the pawn worth it? Is the pawn worth it? He took a pawn. He went back. This is like... Uh, what am I looking at here? This is like back in the day where they, they used to like... The, the guy would leave the village to go like... Uh, go fur trapping or something. So he leaves the village. Some of you know, the, the, the raiders come in and take everything. He comes back to the village at night. And it's like, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> Wait, what? This looks a little different. This looks a little different. Check. And you know what I'm going to do next? I'm going to play h3. I'm going to play h3. I'm not going to bother calculating the next move. h3. No thinking necessary. Yeah, I, I should have played h3 before I moved the knight, but I gave the check and I was like, wait a minute, something feels off here. Ah, uh, it's this move. I don't have h3 in the position. You know, how am I going to appreciate my, my game here? I don't have h3. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. Okay. How am I going to... I got to checkmate this guy. How am I going to mate him? This king is very annoying. He's running around. Um, okay. Any checkmaters in chat? Any checkmaters in chat? How do I... How do I checkmate? Jeez, this is annoying. Uh, <laughs> can't even check the guy. Can't even check the guy. Rook c4. Dude. I can't even get over th This guy's annoying, man. Check. Check. Okay, I think I may maybe just take this next. Could take this as well. This looks, this looks reasonable. But how am I going to checkmate this king? Well, I'm obviously looking for checks, but I'm trying to bring this rook in. I'm trying to follow you guys. You guys said rook c4. Now I'm going to play in rook e4, rook h4. Is Seems like a good idea. Seems like a good idea. Get him. I'm trying, Stacey. He's being very, very tricky here. Okay. Hopefully I'm not blundering, but I've already told you guys my plan, and it is rook there. Okay, check. Let's um, save our king. Now, how do we do this? Remember, the queen and uh, king lining up like that. Let's take a free knight. Uh, points me towards the move bishop f4. I might do that next. I might do that next. Um, he stopped this move, which is why I didn't do it. But yeah, bishop f4 looks like very reasonable. Okay, it's very tricky. Eh? It's very tricky. I'm stopping that. I think I might, I might go for bishop e5 here. Bishop b5 is going to try to trade pieces. I can't pre-move it because I'm worried that he'll attack my rook. So I might want my rook here and then bishop there. Okay, let's get the bishop here. We'll start by pre-moving that. We'll see what he does. Otherwise, I'm going to take the, the bishop. We can pre-move this check. 
Pre-move it. See what he's going to do. Oh, yeah. Pre-move. Okay. And I don't know what he's going to do, so I'm going to pre-move. This is an intermediary pre-move. I'm not sure what he's going to do. So I'm trying to find out where his king's going. Okay. So now I realize I can pre-move queen e7. So I'm going to pre-move queen e7. That's a safe pre-move. Okay. I'm just going to go here. I'm going to find out where he, where he moves. I don't know where he's going to go. Okay. Maybe let's, let's try to pre-move that for a check, maybe. Oh, it's not going to be a mate. It's not going to be a mate. Okay, we got to go back here. Uh, another one. Uh, check. Now I got to check here. And now let's check there. That's going to be checkmate. There we go. There we go. Now, why do I recommend doing that? Because it's very hard to calculate one move at a time. It's very hard to calculate one move at a time. So here after knight there, his king could go anywhere, right? There's multiple squares the king could go to. So why, why did I pre-move king here? Because the guy's in check. I know that he has to react to it. So I'm going to take my king, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make a pre-move that does nothing. Now, if you have 0 0.2 seconds, hey, you might have to take some risks. But what I'm proposing is a very effective way to pre-move in the end game. And look how much time he used. Look how much time he used. Okay. After this, I pre-move this. Okay. And then he used eight seconds. That's enough time for you guys to calculate. Okay, wait a minute. The king can't move anywhere here. So queen e7 is a safe pre-move. So this is what I'm what I'm saying. You know, if you want to improve your pre-moving at the end of the game, give a check and then do a pre-move like this. Okay. Then it gives you time to calculate. Okay. So I didn't need to do this. Maybe it's because I didn't have enough time. After those three extra seconds, I was able to realize, look, this is a safe pre-move. Okay, he goes here, right? This is my other waiting move. And then my opponent took three seconds. That's enough time for me to get another pre-move off, okay? And obviously, I know some mating patterns, so it definitely helps. Um, maybe h4 would not be natural to you guys. But the bottom line is uh, the idea of pre-moving a check and then making a random pre-move just to give you enough time to calculate a position, especially when all you're doing is going for mate. Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a helpful tactic. So uh, what was the opening? Oh yeah, the Sicilian. Guys, this is, uh, this is exactly what I was saying. This is exactly what I was saying. In the Sicilian, we play c3, and we want to play the move d4. Okay? We want to play the move d4. And our opponents, <laughs> what did I tell you? They're always going to mess up and allow d4. Right from the opening, our opponent's king was a d7. Just a disaster. Just a disaster. Um, yeah, let's get another game. Five minutes. AG4410. Thank you, AG. Ooh, that's a very high rating. 1291. Is this Pavlakic's son? All right, AG4410, five subs. Appreciate that, man. Let's go. E5. You guys know the drill. Five on top of that. Exactly, real black queen. Back from your self-imposed ban. Yeah, you have high standards for yourself, AG. You do. High standards. Guys, did we get a King's Gambit? Can anyone remember? Did we get a King's Gambit before in this series? What are we supposed to do? Who remembers? Because it's useless if you guys remember getting a King's Gambit, but you don't remember what you're actually supposed to do. I'm seeing a lot of different answers. This might need a refresher. Okay, step one will take it. Step one will take it. A few, a few people uh, do, do remember. I see you guys. I see you guys. So after we take, okay, queen h4 is the, the threat. So, you know, the, the king's gambit move is always the knight. And then I said we're going to play d5. And the reason d5 is played is because people always play bishop c4. So it's a great response, and it always wins. Perfect. There we go. There we go. And now my opponent has disconnected. Guys, I'm telling you, chess is so goddamn easy. So goddamn easy. Just listen to me. I'm, I'm giving you guys free wins. Giving you guys free wins. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't think our buddy's coming back, boys. I don't think he's coming back. I think he's gonzo. <laughs> uh, this is brutal. Oh, he's here! How did that even work? How did that even work? He's back! Pavlens! Uh, we're gonna trade queens because we're up a piece. We're up a piece. <laughs> Engine turned on. Easy clap. <laughs> he's firing up the old uh, silicon and now he's back to have at me. Splar with five gifted. Guys, let's just focus on developing now, eh? Let's just focus on developing. Ooh, Bishop X F4. Okay, and as I always say, we do not care about this pawn. Um, right now, all I'm going to do is try to develop as quick as possible. Like Bishop here, Bishop here. Um, this Bishop, maybe with a check, makes a lot of sense. Castling. Okay. Thank you very much, Splar, for the support. The five gifted subs on top of that. Okay, uh, getting developed nice and quick here. Love to see it. Yeah, guys, uh, we went over what to do against the King's Gambit. I'm telling you, D5 is OP. T5 is OP. Castle. Castle. Okay, I have a question for you guys. I'm going to start by playing H6 so that I can ask you guys, where do we put our rooks? Where do we put our rooks? The center. Ah, somebody, someone give that guy a pat on the bat. Pat on the bat. Pat on the back. Someone give that guy a pat on the back. Center. Thanks, Chief. Pat my back. Somebody pat my back. C8. I see a lot of C8. Why is C8 a really good one? Attacks the bishop, gains time. So we start with C8. I agree. The next one is the one that needs you know a little bit more discussion, in my opinion. Okay. So he plays the move E5. Uh, seems like a weird move. Attacks the knight. Um, the way I would uh, maybe view this is that the knight wants to move. It can't go here. We've talked about how we don't want to move it to the side. I think d7 is better than e8, just in terms of the habit. So I'd probably go to d7. Probably go to d7. Okay. Um, speaking of trades, absolutely we want to do this. There's just no doubt in my mind. Okay. He's offering me a trade. I'm not going to say no. Okay. I'm um, also, I should have probably done this earlier. Honestly speaking, guys, I should have probably done this earlier. I was so focused on castling, playing h6, but that's a trade that I, I should be taking. Okay, now when we look at this, I think it's pretty clear a rook needs to be here because that's where we're going to collect all these pawns. Okay, I know it looks tempting, rook e8 open file, but at the end of the day, uh, that pawn needs to be captured. That pawn needs to be captured, right? That's our next plan. That's our next plan. Thanks for all the gifted subs so far, guys. I really appreciate it. We're, I guess we're trying to get back to 16k. Um, for those that are part of the uh, the current sub frenzy here on the channel. Uh, just know that you are part of something very cool. I was checking the other day, and of all Twitch channels on, you know, on the website, of all channels, I think our total sub number when we were at 17,400 was uh, top 25, top 30 on the whole website. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. We, we've dropped down a bit since then, but um, that was kind of a kind of a special milestone. Um, 95, and let's take that. I mean, that, that's why we put the rook there. That's why we put the rook there. Okay, I mean, he's just giving me pawn after pawn, so, uh, I mean, let's take that. Let's take that. He's being generous about it. So ever zone out and accidentally play GM chess? No, I... I <laughs> I have a hard time playing GM chess, trust me. You don't see GM chess for me too often. That's why it's so easy to do these series. 
because I'm, I'm able to play the moves that naturally come to my mind. Okay, we're in an endgame. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shuffle the king towards the, uh, the middle of the board here. Free pawn, agreed, agreed. They're free pawns, but when I see an endgame, uh, I might take free pawns, but I'm, I'm also not, not gonna shy away from bringing the king to the middle. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Thank you, Fatal Walrus Encounter. It's a great username. The more I read it, the funnier it is. Thank you, Fatal Walrus. Five gifted subs. And J Hall 90 with the two months. Um, okay, I'm gonna bring the king little. I know it looks crazy what I'm doing, but uh the reason that I'm I'm bringing the king to the middle like this, and I know it looks silly, um, the reason I'm doing it is because you guys see me do it in other positions, and I want to do it in positions like this as well, so you guys don't get the the feeling like I'm only bringing the king in when it's good, you know? And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make that distinction. I'm not trying to make that distinction. I'm trying to bring the king in all the time. So that, that is why I'm gonna play king here. I'm gonna take that. Right? That is why I'm, I'm playing this way. Your fundamentals are confused. They shouldn't be. <laughs> I'm just a simple guy trying to take every pawn on the board. This is not the best way to play, but you know, we got a pass pawn, so I'll probably take this guy next. Depends what he does. I assume he'll want to take this. So we'll make sure to take this. And to be honest, we, we sort of want to start pushing this pawn here. Okay, so he's got his own ideas. He's got his own ideas. He's looking to push his pawn. So I've got this guy. We're going to try to run that up the board. I just got to play a little double duty here. Get my pawn up and uh, come around. Okay, I mean, a trade. You'd think we have to take. Now, this pawn wants to go here, but at the same time, I got his pawn moving up the board. So how am I gonna stop his pawn? How am I gonna stop his pawn? Where do we wanna go? Here? And maybe here? Stop that? Okay, so we stopped his pawn. Now it's time for our pawn. Now it's time for our pawn. Let's get out of the way. And is it time to, to send the lad home? Is it time to send him home? Here we go. Well, you guys know what I want to do. It's not a not a big secret here. Okay. Trade. Oh, it's a great little tactic we can use here. Watch. Would you look at that? Oh my goodness. Wow. It's a discover check. That's a great tactic. Hmm. I don't know how that was there. That's kind of perfect, though. That's ah, sweet. Nice little tactic. Awesome. All right, let's get a few pre-moves in. Let's get the knight out of the way. And let's connect the king and queen. You know what I like to do in any game when I'm pre-moving? This is what I like to do. I'm, it might look silly. It might look silly. I like to keep the king and queen really close to one another. And pre-move like this. Okay? Nice and simple. Nice and simple, okay? The reason that I do this is because I have a, a technique that I, I'd love to share with you. <laughs> oh, wouldn't I love to share it with you for uh, pre-moving endgames, especially when you have a queen. Queen and king is a fairly automatic pre-move endgame for me. Uh, I've been doing it so many times. So, knight a5, inaccuracy. Of course it's an inaccuracy, but... Doesn't matter. Basically, every time you try to check me with a queen and a knight, what you'll realize is that the knight gets in your way. The knight never helps you check me. It's, it's, it's very annoying. It's very annoying. So what I like to do, missed win knight c4. It's like, okay, chess.com. <laughs> Relax, bud. Uh, I like to bring the qu king and queen close to one another and just the knight, it's as if it's not on the board, okay? It's as if it's not on the board. The king and queen just slowly advance together, but not just in one direction. Slowly, what you want to do is you want to go like side to side, and basically you want to get your queen and king eventually down here to that square. That's the magic square. One, two, three, and four. Why are those magic squares? Well, I'll show you. You can see how good my technique is here. Miss win, inaccuracy, miss win, blunder, inaccuracy, inaccuracy. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, thanks, Hambo. <laughs> great, great technique. Okay, so the reason that we want to uh, get to these 
four squares. And why I say they are magical squares is because, okay, king's going to have to move here. And I go here. Now, your king's always going to be in the, one of these center squares, or it should be. And it's going to be supporting the queen on one of these squares. The king, by default, if you've got him cornered off, is always going to be on one of these two squares, right? No matter which corner you're talking about. They're the only, they're the only squares available. Now, whichever square the king is on when you pre-move this, you're going to know exactly where he's going to move to the next square. So you can still pre-move, right? So you, you pre-move all your moves. You get your queen to one of these magic squares. The king is only going to have two squares. Now, it's going to be sitting on one of them, which means you know where his next move is going to be by force. 100% guarantee you know his next move. So in this position, I have just played the move. You know, queen, king here, let's say king here, queen f6. So I know his next move is going to be this 100%, which means I can pre-move this move. That's a pre-move queen here. And now it doesn't matter where he goes because he's only got two squares. My next move is this. My next move is that. And look at that. That's a force checkmate. How many moves did that take? From the magic square, it takes one, two, three. It should take three moves every time you have this position. Okay. If his, his king went here, let's say king there, his king goes here. Oh, sorry. Let's say king goes here and you check. Okay. Check. It sucks. You can't, you can't actually pre-move this. Uh, here or here because you don't know where he's going to go. But you can pick your queen up and you can hover. You can hover the queen. And when he drops the king here, you quickly play that. When he drops the king here, you quickly play that. And then your next move, pre-move the king and pre-move the queen there. It'll be made every single time. Okay, it'll be made every single time. And this works no matter what. Um, like in this position, you know, maybe the king accidentally slips by. Um, if the king did slip by, first of all, what would I do? I would actually, I'd literally pre-move my knight out of the way. So this is advice for when you don't have any knight or bishop on the board. If you do have it on the board, chuck it in the corner and try to forget about it. Okay, but uh, the knight goes there. Obviously, we can try to um, imagine the, you know, the pieces moving together. He could go this way, but I'm just going to try to show you guys uh, what happens if... There, you get that queen in the magic square. The king isn't even in the middle, but you get the idea. Once you get the queen here, you know the king is forced to go here. Pre-move this, pre-move that, pre-move that. You'll meet him in three every single time. So it takes a lot of practice to get used to it, but bottom line, it works. It works. So when I have the, the end game king and queen, I'm always pre-moving together until I get the queen on one of these four squares, and then it should be a checkmate in three. So that's the technique I use. I recommend it. It's really easy. Um, takes a bit of time getting used to, but I think it's worth your time learning it. Um, opening. I know this was a bit of a laugh when it happened, but honestly, d5 was the move we were planning. He happened to pre-move bishop c4, so it was hilarious. Easy win. But um, if he didn't do that and he took here, then we're going to go bishop here, knight out, castle. That's that's it. Oh, look at that raid. Let's go. John Bartholomew. Appreciate that. Can I play Scandi? Well, actually, on this stream, we talk a lot about... Uh, how bad Scandinavian is at 1200. So guys, unless unless you guys have your chestable courses and you're actually studying your lines, uh, no, this is actually a stream where, where we make fun of the Scandi. So uh, tune in. If you guys came from John's channel, you, you probably only hear good things about the Scandi over there, but uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll make fun of it for you here. <laughs> How ironic would it be to get Scandi right now? We're gonna get another game. Okay, 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 okay. Terrible opening. God awful. We're already going to bring our queen out in the middle of the board, breaking every single, every single habit. Ugh. Ugh. It's disgusting. It's the worst opening. My goodness. Oh, my queen's out. It's terrible. There's no habits here. There are no, no habits at all. Queen's out first piece. Who invented this opening? It's garbage. All right. Well, let's, let's at least try to follow. So my, oh, I'm already getting attacked. What is this? I got to move my queen again? kind of opening is this? Okay, I guess I'll go back. I'll go back. I'll go back. Okay. Got to got to get the bishop out. Got to get the bishop out. Now, e6, knight out, bishop out. Now, why am I going to play e6? Cuz this guy's about to play knight e5. Cuz that's how bad the Scandi is. 
I, you know, imagine I play a move like c6, the guy plays like knight e5. I take his queen, he checkmates me. It'd just be disgusting. Jeez, imagine getting checkmated in seven moves, only in the Scandi. Only in the Scandi. Okay, goes bishop there. We're going to go here and follow the habits. We're going to attack that bishop. We're going to attack that bishop. Okay, and uh, hang on. I think we can take this. You know why? Because if the queen takes, then what we're going to do is we're going to give him doubled isolated pawns. Okay, doubled isolated pawns. We like that. We like that. Let's finish development. Okay, wait. D5. Okay, I think I got to take that. Oh, okay. Knight take. Ooh. Uh, well, maybe develop my piece and also cover that, uh, that square. Yeah, doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look too bad. Wait a minute. Why does my position look okay here? Wait a minute. I thought the Scandi was... Wait, black's just better. Wait, black's winning. <laughs> wait, are we going to centralize the knight and attack that pawn? Wait, wait, black's just doing well here. Wait, actually, good opening. Hang on a sec. Might have to, might have to review the whole catalog here. Might have to add the Scandi in as a top opening. Wait a minute. Did we just win a pawn on F3? Wait a minute, is that a free pawn? Check. Wait, hold on a sec. Wait a minute. It's too good to be true. There's no way. It's too good. Free pawn with check. Only the very best of openings would be able to give me a free pawn with a check. Uh, we're going to be going rooks to the middle. You hate playing against the Scandi. You always lose. Uh, I would not be afraid of the, the, the Scandinavian. You know what I mean? That, that wouldn't be the number one opening to be scared of for me. Okay, he's going to go here. Um, okay, we need, to, we need to basically make a few random pawn moves. Uh, we need to get those in. So let's play b6. Okay, stop c5. H2 would get the knight stuck. Yeah, for those wondering about this move here... Um, the main reason I didn't do this is uh, I'm actually familiar. I don't know if you guys are, but there's a there's a film industry um, that has done extensive documentaries on um, getting stuck. And after knight takes h2, unfortunately, uh, the knight would be stuck. And the documentaries that I've watched, uh, it doesn't usually end well for the, the guy getting stuck. So I, I noticed here that after knight takes h2... Um, just some of the research that I've, I've I've read online, it's not not the best not the best uh, for the guy guy stuck in there. So that's why I decided to retreat, get out, um, change the scope of the game. I, I didn't want to end up like uh, you know some of the examples that I've seen. Uh, Ninety five, and we continue here. Uh, let's bring the king to the middle of the board. Yeah, Jack, I have seen the washing machine documentary. Um, there, there is a pretty, uh, pretty well-researched documentary on washing machines and how easy it is to get stuck in there. So yeah, I, I think we've seen the same one. I think we've seen the same one. Um, okay, rooks being attacked. I think we need to trade rooks because our, our rook can't move. And let's attack the knight. Yes, we got to move the rook. Got to move the knight. Okay, it's interesting. He didn't take my pawn. I thought he would. Oh, he must take with the bishop. I see. I see. Okay. You saw the Twitch rivals commentary yesterday. Thank you, Deoxide. Cheers, dude. Okay. Pawn f4. Got to move this knight. Um, let's choose somewhere uh, that influences the center here. Which one's my favorite documentary? There was there was one about a, a poor impro impoverished uh, lady who, um, I think she used her life savings and spent it on a pencil, and unfortunately dropped that pencil um, into the the leather. Um, it's a, a terrible terrible story. Into the leather um, pillows on a couch, and 
and uh, she tried her hardest to to get it to get it back. I think it held sentimental value to her. And the whole documentary was about retrieving the pencil. Um, uh, to be honest, uh, I don't want to spoil. I, I won't spoil it for you guys. But it's it's a moving moving documentary. No spoilers. No spoilers. Okay, Bishop there. I mean, a guy's not going to shy away from a trade. Rub upon. We probably also don't know that opposite bishops is just going to be a draw. So <laughs> here we go. Okay, let's uh, start pushing uh, some of the friends here. Okay, maybe a check. Maybe a check. Okay, let's uh, push. Okay, capture. Oh, interesting. Let's see if I go here. Is he going to defend? He is. What about a check? Okay. Let's bring our bishop uh, back into the action. Back into the action. Hmm. King of the middle. We're not going not gonna to complain about that. Okay, bringing the king up. Got eight seconds, so lots of time here. Okay, check. Bring the king up. Okay, uh, maybe a check. Let's uh, bring the rook here. This looks like a nice, solid game. Nice, solid game. I think, uh, okay, let's bring the king. Let's get a pre-move here. Let's uh, attack this pawn. Just a nice, calm, pre-moving game. Okay, we're going to pre-move that king. And pre-move that pawn. And what we're going to be able to do here is pre-move our king like this. And Go for the win. Just a great thing. We're going to pre-move here. Ah, beautiful. Hel holding a draw with 1.1 seconds. Jeez. It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. Proof of Scandi's trash. Well, yeah, I wasn't able to get a win with it. I wasn't able to get a win. I think that's definitive proof right there. Scandi's pretty much a draw. Uh, I think we learned that. You know, Shout out to John for the raid. But um, what did we learn here? Honestly, not much. It's just a not a very memorable experience. Not a not a repeatable experience. I mean, yeah, knight takes h2. Might get a little uh, a little stuck there. So be careful. And yeah, honestly, just a uh, a well fought game and a an appropriate draw. I think six point five seconds to three minutes. I think I think draw is the fair result. Uh, Scandinavian just for the lulls, guys. Draws the fair result. Not part of our series here, but in case you are here from um, John Bartholomew's channel, shout out to John, very good friend of mine. Um, I know that he likes the Scandinavian, and I know that he stands by it, so I thought I'd give you guys a game. But what we're doing here is we're focusing on a specific set of openings that we've been working on and playing on this account uh, repeatedly, and Scandinavian's not one of them. So uh, if you want to stick around and see what this series, Building Habits, is really all about, um, hopefully we can get a uh, solid game going here after this. Let's get another one. Roger O. Thornhill. Okay. All right, Roger. So against e4, I've just been sticking with e5. Just nice and simple. Nice and simple. Okay. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. Just going to defend that pawn in the center of the board. Right there. I think we'll go bishop out, knight out. Nice and uh, Nice and easy, let's say. Okay, bishop there. Let's go a6. a6. Is that the most British name ever? Okay, Roger of Thornhill. Good to know. Good to know. He's, he's sounding pretty British out here. Yeah. Let's go knight out. Knight in to d5. Wow, what a, what a remarkable move. Knight in to d5. Well, guys, I... <laughs> I've always cautioned taking this pawn, and I'm going to heed my own advice, and I'm simply going to castle here. I know. Call me crazy, but there are not many instances where I take this pawn before castling. However, there are not many instances where I do not take this pawn after castling. Give me that. <laughs> Give me that. Once you're castled, I think any pawn in the center that you can take, you should, you should capitalize on. Definitely. But 
Uh, I still think it's a good habit not to be getting greedy. Now, obviously, you can make a judgment call about whether it's safe or not. But I still think that grabbing pawns in the center before you've castled, just bad things can happen to good people. All right, so be careful. Be careful. Rook f1. Unfortunately, my opponent did that thing where you try to castle and you start with your rook first, and the arbiter comes by and he says, "Yeah, excuse me, you got to move your rook," <laughs> and you got to play rook f1. Just a terrible circumstance. Terrible circumstance. Let's get this bishop out. Let's get developed. Okay, d3. We do have to move this knight. Uh, don't have a lot of squares to move it to. Let's go to f6. And wait a minute. Hey, this guy's OP. Wait one second. Hold the phone here. How did. How is he going to double my pawns? Wait, is he going to mate me? Who is this guy? He's OP. Roger O. Thornhill. Uh, guys, we might be we might be getting clapped here. We gotta nerf Roger. We gotta nerf my my friend, my amiga Roger. Well, what is this move gonna do? Nothing. He's gonna lose a pawn. So we're gonna play this to kick his knight. Kick his knight. Thanks, Bill. Uh, this is brutal, though. It's it's not what we want. How many times are we ever happy to see this? Uh, pretty much zero. Pretty much zero. Okay, queen d2. My guy's going to castle the other way. He made me think he baited me. He's he's actually hustling me is what he's doing. He made me think that he wasn't uh, sneaky with rook f1. But actually, he was preparing this the whole time. He's preparing that the whole time. Very tricky. Very tricky. Okay, so we've got to finish development. Clean up. I mean, G4. Holy smokes. Uh, pawn in the center looks great. Um, I mean, rook over is fine as well, but I think pawn up makes sense. Okay, now. <laughs> guys, what does he want me to do? He wants me to take it like some sort of sucker and allow queen takes and mate. He wants me to take that. But one thing we've worked on is not being reactive. Just because he plays this move doesn't mean I need to take it. Doesn't mean I need to react to that move, okay? So he goes here. I'd actually like to keep things closed, right? This open line is gonna checkmate me. So I'm gonna play the move F5. I did not expect the move G6, I'll be honest. <laughs> I did not expect that. Roger. Playing the move g6, I mean, okay, I'm going to undouble my pawns and ask you, buddy Roger, what your plan is. Knight g5, wow. What a move by Roger. Okay, well, I'm going to bring the rooks to the middle. Yeah, knight takes e5 was dangerous. Definitely a, a consideration there. And he takes e6. Um, don't mind taking that back with either piece, honestly. Um, I'm going to start with a rook. Maybe I'll double or something. Um, I'm going to make this move just because it gets out of the pin. I think that's a good place to start for me. Chess bro, flag strategy. This is correct. We have to watch out. I got a minute left of four minutes. Okay, he's, he's eyeballing this, but um, not sure that that can be taken advantage of just yet. B5, some pawn moves. I'm looking at knight d4 next. I kind of like knight d4, getting rid of his bishop as an idea. And I actually have all eight of my pawns, which is kind of crazy. All eight of them. Okay, pawn here. I, I think I'm going to take it just to get that um, bishop off the board. Um, what, what do I want to do with this guy? It's a good question. It's a good question. Let's see what happens if I offer him a queen trade. Let's see what happens if I offer him a queen trade. He should decline. Very good move. Very good move by him. Queen g2. Okay. I like that move. Um, it actually causes me to rethink things because I don't have uh, very clear plans here. Let's double the rooks. 
He's going to take care of... I sort of want to take back with my Rook. Um, hitting both of these guys. But it's not... Eh, it's not comfortable. It's not comfortable at all. I think what I'm going to do is... Eh, he's played this. That actually might be helpful. Can I pin this? It is a pin. So I'm just going to... just going to attack it with everything I've got, basically. I'm just going to attack it with everything I've got. Why not queen takes h4? Well, I believe there was bishop g5. But apart from that, it also opens up more lines to my king. It's a little bit greedy, maybe. Um, let's take. Okay, so we're attacking the queen. Got to defend this pawn as well. So maybe like queen watching over this pawn. Time's very low. It's it's rough. It's not, not looking good here, boys. Um, maybe pawn here, pawn here. Um, push pawn in the center of the board. It's another another idea I might lean on. Let's take it back. Okay. Ooh. En passant. I guess I, I can feel I can feel special playing this move. <laughs> you get to feel like a uh, sneaky guy. Okay. It's a really good move by him. Let's get a risky pre move in here. That's a check. That's a check. I say risky because. He could play rook d1. There's so many moves. So many moves that could happen. Rip. Let me let me hit him with this one. Check. Ooh, Roger. Good moves by Roger. And these positions like this, you gotta pre-move like really weird stuff you'd never pre-move. Just oh, just hoping. Just hoping Roger would play rookie one or something. And the reason why you pre-move that is you only have a second. You're not winning this position. You may, you may as well hope that he just plays some outlandish move. King d2. He got us there. Definitely a large part on time. But it was because of this, dude. This is never supposed to happen. We talked about this. We're, we're never supposed to get double pawns. I took a pawn because... Someone in the chat called me low T. I think it was our friend S and M. He called me low T, so I took it. And then the guy got bishop g5 and <laughs> what? How did that happen? That that was a uh, that was a clapping by Roger, and I don't think his accuracy is going to be very high. I don't think the accuracy is going to be too high. Yeah, 51.1, you know. You know, Roger is just a just a well-to-do chap from England. I thought this was all okay. Snake D5. Not the best. Castle, that's fine. Okay, so we're supposed to take that. And after rook f1, a mistake. My move is a blunder. Wow. What a big brain play by Roger O. Thornhill. <laughs> a double question mark. Blunder. So that's terrible. You know what should be done? Is uh, the knight coming back just to solidify that. H6. Not crazy at all. H6. Seriously. H6 might be the vibe here. But h6 here would be good. d6 would be good. Are we unhappy with the opening? I don't think so. This is this is what we want to do. This knight d5 is very tricky. What's the answer, though? Is that we should play h6 or just bring the knight back right away. That's the answer. Because after this, look at this. This is very strong. Although black still has an advantage, this is not comfortable. Okay? This is not something I want to be playing. e4. E4. Uh, here, you guys know the drill. I did get a chop. Okay, we've talked about this, guys. No matter what they do, we're going to be playing this. Because you know what? Everybody who plays the Sicilian autopilots their moves. They never stop and think, hey, what's this guy doing? <laughs> you know, none of that. It's just you get the center for free. That's That's what C3 Sicilian is all about. This is, uh, we've done this, guys. We've done this before. 
We've seen it before. I'm gonna bring the knight out. Next move, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do d5. I could have done it right now. I remember a game I played previously. I didn't do it right away, so I just decided to play this. But we will absolutely play d5. He takes, or, or sorry, he plays here. We're gonna take, and we're gonna develop, and we're gonna castle. Let's go here, here, castle. Okay, very easy. Look at our position already. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. How can we complain about this? Okay, let's uh, get the queen out. Not sure exactly where we want to go. Um, H3, it's very logical. How about some help, guys? Where do the rooks go? Where do the rooks go? Let's go here. Where do the rooks go? Got H3. Bishops look fine. Queen D2, logical. What about our rooks? The center. Did them. I see a lot of C1. I'll start with that. I'll start with that. So, the reason we start with this is because we want to see what he's going to do. So he just played this move. Now, in the past, we've talked about how we don't want to just take and let his pieces develop. So, do we put the rook on E1 or on D1? I think, I think it's a very, uh, very tough question. Very tough question. I think it depends on our move because if we take this guy, then I can see rook d1 being a lot better. Then I can see being a lot better. But remember, if we're not taking this and we're moving our rook right now, if we move it to d1, he's going to take and we're going to end up with a pawn there and our rook does not look too good. So we probably want to go to e1. Okay, because after this capture, the e file and the c file are the ones that are going to be open. Okay, he decides to play e5. So he closes things up. That's fine. He closes things up. We have this open file. We've moved all of our pieces. We got our h3. Is it time for our random pawn move? Sure. Sure. a4. Bishop h6 is not a bad move, but I actually like my bishop a lot more than his, so I don't really want to trade it off. When he goes queen there, well, I'm going to use that important random pawn move. And... Uh, take here and it looks like a, a free pawn to me let's take it you don't understand a random pawn move well it's random you're not supposed to understand it uh, pawn moves are not necessarily supposed to make sense put it that way um okay more pawn moves A4, not so random. Well, there's only two moves. If you guys played B4, it would also be a fantastic move. That's the beauty of the random pawn move. Uh, let's trade. I'm up a uh, pawn, so I feel like trades are a good thing. Well, let's push, push him, baby. And you know what? I'm going to get a rook behind my pass pawn, because that's what you do. You want to push him, baby? Let's get a rook behind. Let's get a rook behind. G5 is a bad move, yes. If you're talking about this, it's a terrible move and it's not even for you for your position if you're talking about this and you made the mistake by saying g5 and you meant g4 it would also be bad yes 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 so what do we want to do push the pawn as far as it'll go that's our number one thing and i i always advise you guys put a rook behind the pawn it's the easiest way to ensure you can advance it yeah random pawn moves do not include pawns on your king side it's always queen side pawns can i go here it looks like yes Looks like yes. Okay, we're going to keep going. Okay, our pawn is now pushed as far as it'll go, I think. Knight there. Now there's a threat here. Knight takes b7. Is that so easy to defend? Not really, actually. Not really. Um, I think I'm just going to keep things simple and take it. We say, don't give up bishop for knight unless you have a reason. Here I have a reason. I'm trying to save my pawn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add support by doubling the rooks to make sure that I'm protecting that pawn as much as possible. My pass pawn, it's, uh, you know, it's going to hopefully win me this game. Rook e to b1. Okay, it's gone here. Let's uh, look to bring my queen over to 
again, watch this pawn. We want the knight on c6. Hey, the knight on c6 would be uh, quite pretty. Let's go queen here. I'm protecting this. And you see, it's all about this pawn, right? I've got everything watching it. And that's how strong the pawn is. All I did was I pushed it earlier. I pushed it earlier. And now it's probably going to win me this game. Getting close to an end game as well. Might be time to bring the king, but only once the queens are off, of course. Of course. Queen a8, important move. Definitely, uh, definitely agree with you guys. Um, queen a8 allows me to take the queen and get rid of the guy in front. It's not, I don't think it's close to completely winning by, by any stretch here. Unless we play some very accurate moves. I like queen a8. Because it's all about protecting this guy. And he decides to resign there. I do not think he needed to. Um, he definitely could have played this move to protect. And the best move that I could play here, I think would actually be rook a1. Preparing to take it. And then go rook a8. Because if I take it first, then go rook a1, he can take my pawn. So... Um, I think rook a1 would, would be a good follow-up. I think it would be. But nevertheless, uh, our buddy from Brazil decided to call it quits, throw in the towel. Never resign. That's my best advice. Seriously. Never resign. It's a KO on your brain. Yeah, so the thing is, it might have seemed com like a complicated game, but honestly, once we got this pass pawn, my plan, I didn't have any plan except pushing it. And then supporting it, like doubling the rooks, getting the queen to protect it, get everything on your side to protect it. And then it just, all I did was play one move after that, and he happened to resign. Okay. But that opening, again, we've talked about it. Sicilian, how effective is this, guys? C3. Every Sicilian we've played today, we play D4. And we're just push one of these pawns, we get the, the full center. Remember, the Sicilian is literally an opening designed to prevent you from getting the full center. There's no way that you want to let your opponent get d4 and have two pawns in the middle. The whole point of the Sicilian is that you, know, you want to be able to take that. So when they prepare to take the center, you have to stop it. And nobody does. Nobody does. That's why I suggest c3 against the Sicilian, because no one ever stops it. There are lots of moves that black can play. It's not like C3 is winning by force, but the moves that black is likely to play, they do not work. They do not work, for the most part. All right, Evan. E4, we're going to play E5. We're going to play Knight C6. You guys have seen this before. We're going to play A6. And we're going to take with the D pawn. Not the P-Pawn, but the D-Pawn. Capturing away from the middle is one of the only moves that we actually do that. We capture away from the center. Have to play E5 as black? Well, I play E5. But we've been playing this opening the entire Habits series. Okay, I'm going to stick to some fairly basic, um, basic moves here. Okay, rook here. It seems like the rooks pretty obviously want to go to these two files. Um, h6. Makes a lot of sense. He's stopping me from going here. So I might just go bishop there, develop my queen, bring my rook over. I think this is a fairly standard uh, type of setup. Okay. Here. He's playing well. I can tell, like, he definitely knows what he's doing. He's got a great position, and I'm not a fan of that move. <laughs> well, I jinxed him successfully. Did that on purpose, of course, to get a better position. Not a fan of this move. Uh, pawn on c2, very solid. c3, I'm a little concerned on the d file for him. If that pawn is going to be loose. Like, imagine the bishop's not there. I could even sacrifice, well, sacrifice, quote, quote unquote. Um, 94 because of the pin. 
So it's something I'll be looking to exploit here. Let's get um, some random pawn moves over here. Why queen on e-file? No particular reason. I think both of these moves would be would be pretty good. Ooh, it's going d4. Um, okay, well, it looks like one that I need to take because basically he's hanging this pawn. So I'm going to take it, but I don't really want to lose that. So I'm going to take this and then take on, and then take on e4. At least that's the plan. That is the plan. Okay, I don't think there's anything stopping me, so let's take that. Um, queen there. I mean, nice being attacked. I think I'm going to learn my lesson and just go back. I think I'm going to learn my lesson and go back. Remember, um, real black queen, that bishop c4, if you attack something higher value and a lower value piece is behind it, then it's a, it's a skewer. This would just be a pin. It would just be pinning the knight. Okay, bishop here um, definitely looks like a, uh, a piece I can take. Um, I don't have to, but um, bishop takes e5 looks fine. I think I like a centralizing move like bishop d5. You know, we have a few threats here. Why is bishop d5 the move I'm thinking of? Because of these double pawns there. If I can double those pawns, I'm very, very happy. Very happy. Okay, after a move like this, I think it's very, very easy to understand why you guys might want to undouble your pawns. So, there we go. We're going to undouble. Okay. Knight d4, good move, like a really good move by um, Kevin. I think at this point, I might just like say trade because you know what? We're up a pawn. Let's try to follow the, oh, he takes this way. Ooh, I don't like that. I don't like that from Evan. We're going to guard this pawn and attack that pawn. Multi-purpose. Um, I think Evan... I was going to say, I think Evan should play king g2 to defend it. c4 is played. And I, I think at this point, it's very easy to justify um, taking this pawn. However, c4 played. I think I am going to uh, just play another pawn move over here. I'm not going to immediately uh, take that queen d7. You know, I was slightly advanced there. Defense and attack all at once. This is my plan. I'm going to take this at some point. Knight into f5. Okay. Knight into f5. Wasn't the knight hanging? It was his turn. His turn. Taking pawns is 2,000 plus. I don't think so, but I'm not going to take every single pawn I see. Wayne Beam, thanks for the 18 months. I am well. Okay, good move by Evan. Very, very good move. Um, at this point, I think we need to look at these pawns and treat them like what they are, past pawns. Past pawns, right? These, these are pawns that we want to push. The fact that they're bumping into each other, I, do not like at all. Um, I wish that I could push them easier. So I, I think it is a little bit annoying. I can't really move the queen without losing this pawn, or so I am led to believe. So how do we maybe get this knight out of here? Rook d3, reasonable move. But again, we're not always looking for in the best moves. I'm always thinking about what moves follow the habits you know the best uh, that, that's what i'm always thinking let's bring the rook to the middle and guard this pawn a lot of people in chat maybe maybe they don't know the point of the series but uh, maybe they do and they still they still say like you know hey what about this move and it's like well 
just many moves, you know. I could I could play a lot of different moves. Let's play c3. This is a discovered attack. Um, I don't know why, but I have a feeling he's going to blunder his queen. Hope he doesn't do that. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Let's guard this pawn. It's been all about pushing this pass pawn. Let's try to keep it. Um, they're like, hey, what, what about this move? What about this move? And it's like, yeah, those moves are good. Those moves are good. Maybe they're even better than my moves. Okay? Maybe they're even better than my moves. But I'm not always looking to play the best move in this series. Rook d2. I, basically, I have a plan here of trying to push this pawn up the board. And wow, knight e3. Holy smokes, that is a, a fancy looking move. Uh, that's a queen for a queen. So that trade doesn't seem so bad. Um, let's move the rook. Maybe push my pawn. Okay. Push the pawn. And now my rook is actually trapped. Uh, brilliant me. Let's see if I can get my knight in here. <laughs> It's not uh not too brilliant what I've done here. Uh let's let's go here. I'm trying to take a pawn. My, my knight, my uh, rook, sorry, is trapped. I just can't move the rook. Can't move the rook. Okay. I'm gonna try to take pawns. Remember in the end game. King in the middle, take pawns. I, I can take a lot of pawns right now. Check. Check, 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 check. And let's go over here. So I can take a lot of pawns. I think that's going to be my goal. And I think it's uh, I think it's pass pawn time. I think it's pass pawn time. So let's push this pawn as far off the board as it'll go. That's my pass pawn. Let's see if we can send that thing up the board. Here we go. Oh, maybe check. All we want to do, check. We're gonna push the pawn. We got six seconds. We're pretty much pre-moving at this point, and we're gonna encounter an unfortunate situation here. King G two actually stops us. We can pre-move here. Get some pre-moves. It's good practice. Um, you should be able to make like I would say close to twenty-five moves. Oh, hang on a sec, guys. Pre-moves. Hey, this auto queen sure isn't useful. This auto queen sure isn't useful. Hey, get this garbage out of here. Get this garbage out of here. Could have taken the rook. As I said, it's under 10 seconds, guys. I, I think it's actually very normal that you guys should miss taking the rook there. I, I think it's a little too advanced to... Go from pushing your pawn to taking someone's rook because here all you're focusing on is pushing this pawn. It should almost be a pre-move here. It should, well, it should be a pre-move basically, right? So we're not gonna want to waste time like hoping for certain moves. So I, I think it should be a pre-move. You're not gonna see every tactic um, when it comes to the end game. You identify a plan and go with it. That's the best. That's the best. All right. Identify a plan. Stick with it. It's better that you have a plan and you're pre-moving it than try to change your plan every single move. So, uh, what was the opening, first of all? Okay. Pretty good. Uh, honestly, he might have a better accuracy than me. No, he doesn't. Okay, I think, I think he fell apart near the end of the game. Uh, his opening was amazing. His opening was amazing. So yeah, this is really good. C3 and not a fan. Um, not a fan of C3. I thought he should keep this like that. Just go like knight g3, maybe queen e2, something like that. Yeah, I was really impressed by his opening. Yeah, that move wasn't great. Lost the pawn in the middle. Yeah, I guess I guess he did have uh, his fair share of suspicious moves I kind of forgot about. Um, but yeah, you're not always going to identify the best plan. And here, it's tough to, to move with black. I always say, if you have a pass pawn, make your plan around that because it's the easiest. So what I tried to do was just focus on pushing that C pawn. And he actually, I thought he played very well um, defending. So I just tried to clean up pawns in the end game. 
You took every pawn, and here is an important moment. When you're pushing a pass pawn, a rook in front of the pawn is completely clumsy. So clumsy. It never helps the pawn advance. Where does the rook need to be? It actually needs to be here on h8. So I know it looks crazy, but I might actually consider rook here, rook here, rook here, and push the pawn. So I, I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, and you might look silly for doing it, but the rook belongs behind the pawn. There's no question about that. If you're defending your opponent's pass pawn, your rook belongs behind it. If you're pushing your own, your rook belongs behind it. Rooks belong behind pawns regardless, okay? Regardless. So the opening was, was fine. Not something we need to change. I think this is okay. We're out of the opening. Solid. Don't have the best position, but very solid here. Okay, e4. Of course, of course, you start with e4. And we got an e5 player. We got an e5 player. Knight f3. Fresh bomb on top of that. Oh, we got all these like uh, 1100 Stafford bras. But so far, they're not affecting our, uh, our habits series because you know, we're, able to, <laughs> we're able to dissuade all the Stafford bras. That's right, Kukulov. On top of that, takes. Which one are we going to take with? It's always a decision. Um, usually early on, I, I often say take this way, right? Because the um, D takes opens up the bishop. So take this way for now. He takes my center pawn. You're not going to see me fumble uh, too much here. Of course, I'm going to take his center pawn because I'm castled. Um, and we did get some primes. Thank you. Three months from 96 Andy and CK343 with two months as well. Mod check. Primers. Mod check. Kukulov, 10 gifted subs. Thank you, Kukulov. Bishop E6. Now, one thing we have been doing is not necessarily um, going for these positions where we just trade and help them out. So uh, to, to showcase that, I'm going to bring the bishop back. I'll just cover that. Here we go. Are we going to get the cube? How are we going to get the cube? Thank you, Kukula, for the 10 gifted subs. Who is next? Let's go. Let's go. Rook to the middle. This is nice and easy, right? How do you turn on auto queen? I have no idea. I think I'll find out in the next level of habits. Okay, knight there. Again, I'm going to steer clear of taking here. I've already made my decision. I'm going to stay here. If you want to take me, go for it. I'm going to play h3. Who came up with habits? I just, I just made it up. I just made it up. A lot of people have their own uh, takes on educational streams, speedruns. This seemed like it would be a lot of fun, but also uh, but, yeah, generally... Genuinely want it to be informative as well. Let's go uh, bishop g5. I mean, I'm just going to develop my piece of a tempo. I'm hitting the queen, supported by the knight. And you know what? Even if he could play this move, I don't think it's that good. Um, turns out he can't. He's actually pinned. Okay. Queen and then rook to, to finish off. And then we're fully developed. Whoa! Okay. We got uh, a sacrificing Samuel over here. Bishop takes h3. Bishop takes h3. Queen takes h3. And I don't know what the follow-up is because all his pieces are over here. So how do I defend this? Well, queen here looks like a great move because we want to just bring the queen and offer a trade. I know that he doesn't want to trade with me because he... Well, yeah, we just saw his, his last move. <laughs> No, he doesn't want to trade with me because he just sacrificed a piece. So let's try this move. Knight e6. Very reasonable. Very reasonable. Um, if I take that, pawn takes. And you know what? It opens up the rook on my queen. That's not that good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with exactly what I came here to do, which is trade queens. I don't mind if he trades more pieces. All trades are good, in fact. All trades are good. Knight h2 is your habit versus that sack. It's a great habit, honestly. Knight h2 would be very strong there. The long knight, thanks for the fresh prime sub as well. We are getting a few primers, guys. We are. Oh, and rook there opens us up for a nice little 
rook takes, right? Hopefully that tactic is not too, too crazy. Bishop takes, and that should be it for our buddy Juno. Rook to the middle. There we go. That's important. We'll take that win. We'll take that win. The sack didn't go too well, but you need to know how to handle it. I, I think that sacrifice is probably KOing a lot of you guys in chat. A lot of you guys that are saying, oh yeah, that, that was easy. The same, the same guys were typing that. Maybe these sacrifices are hurting you. So maybe it looked easy. You still have to understand how to deal with sacrifices like that. I mean, of course it's a mistake. It's not good, but my queen f4 was not the best reaction. In fact, someone in chat had a really good uh, suggestion that knight h2 is the answer that he usually plays whenever this happens. And knight h2 is great. After there's a sacrifice here, there's often a threat of queen g4 check, and your piece is often hanging. So knight h2 deals with both of those things. It is a good habit um, against the sacrifice. However, you can also think of it like, hey, you know, just identify what pieces are coming to the attack next. This guy, I mean, can take that. This, 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 this. They're all covered, right? Every single square here. I don't see how these knights join. I don't see how these rooks join. It's just a queen. Because it's just a queen, I decided to just go offer a trade, basically. This is, this is not something that is easy to deal with. It takes practice. But if you guys are wondering, knight here is a great, great habit to get into against the sack. Okay? Against the sack. It's really, really good. It covers all these squares, and there's just there's just no threats anymore. And you can continue uh, continue to do things on the e file. Maybe play rook e3, queen f4. You can follow my thing next. Offer trade, queen e3. But yeah, um, queen f4 is what I played. It's a good move. It's not the best move, I think, but it's very reasonable. Yeah, and rook rook e8 was too much, too much, too big of a mistake. Hey guys, just a reminder that Building Habits is going to be a regular series on our YouTube channel. So make sure to get subscribed if you are not already. Drop a comment down below for the algorithm and let me know what you thought about the video. See you next time.